All right, so I thought I would do an intro on the YouTubes of my book, The Age of Movement, and to intro the book, I'm going to read the intro. Uh, so this is really just a history of me. Uh, I call it the origin story. Anyways, let's get going with it. Origin story. I can still remember a light frost on the ground and the cold, damp ground against my back as I watched my leg twitch as it lay twisted and broken off to the side of my body. The year was 1993 and I was nine years old. That morning I was playing pickup football before school when a friend, yes, we are still friends, tackled me from behind, which caused a freak spiral fracture of my left femur. I was in the hospital for almost two weeks total. And on the fourth day, a pediatric orthopedic surgeon was flown from Chicago to my small town hospital. On that day, I was given two options. I could wear a cast that ran the entire length of my left leg across my pelvis and halfway down my right leg for six to eight months, or inserting a titanium rod into the marrow cavity of my femur and securing it with four screws. Surprisingly enough, my parents let me choose which procedure I wanted. There had been many changes in my household in the past year, divorce, new parents and siblings, and the beginnings of far more autonomy than I ever knew I could handle. I believe that this scenario allowed my parents to feel comfortable with me choosing my fate. Whether it was the thought of wearing an uncomfortable and embarrassing cast for nine months on end, or if my vast nine-year-old orthopedic knowledge sold me on the intramedullary rod, either way, I opted for the surgery. At the time, I was only the ninth child to receive the surgery, and the original plan was to leave the rod in for six to eight months and then remove it in a final surgery. I spent another eight days in the hospital after the surgery. During that time, the only sliver of physical therapy that I received consisted of walking up three stairs using a railing, crossing a platform, and then walking back down three stairs. My physical therapist then coached me on using crutches properly and then sent me on my way. I can only assume that my physicians thought the, the resiliency of a nine-year-old body would trump any attempts at traditional physical therapy. Knowing what I know now, this was a misguided judgment that would determine a path for better or worse for the rest of my life. My medical team laid out a few more precautions before I could head home. The first was to never play contact sports again. While highly unlikely, a second fracture of my femur could lead to amputation if the titanium rod became fractured or twisted. The thought of this terrified my mother. The second warning was that I should prepare to walk with a bit of a limp for the rest of my life. As if that was not enough, the doctors told me I would likely never run again. So that is what I was sent home with, a titanium rod two crutches, the fear of God instilled in me of a possible future amputation, and the likelihood that I would never feel the wind against my face in a full-out sprint. The next few weeks, I was pampered and catered to by my parents and relatives. I openly welcomed the gifts, especially the food. Over the next month or so, I gained 15 pounds, 14 of which I'm sure could be contributed to Little Debbie snack cake consumption. At nine years old, I had already become the modern-day picture of poor health. Overweight, sedentary, and dealing with musculoskeletal pain and dysfunction. Thank God that I began to see the first glimpses of grit appear in my DNA at this pivotal point in my life. My orthopedist recommended that I remain on crutches for six months. I was off them in half that time. After five months, I attempted to run with my friends, even though it looked more like a limping, hop along type gait. At my six-month checkup, I was told that my bone was healing at an incredibly rapid pace. Knowing what I know now about physiology, loading of bone injuries early and often results in improved healing. While it seems like this should have been good news, it meant that my orthopedist wanted to leave the titanium rod in my leg. He explained that a second surgery would be far more traumatic than the first, and he assured me that doing so would not have any long-term ramifications. Fast forward to my freshman year of high school, I had just finished my first football game. I had won the battle to play contact sports again. As we were reviewing the film of the game, my coach yelled out, Beard, why in the hell are you limping? Are you hurt? The thing was, I didn't even realize I was limping. 
The lack of physical therapy, possibly my impatience with crutches and my obstinate and crude return to running had led to what I know now is termed unconscious dysfunction. Basically, I was completely unaware that I had developed a limp. The next day at practice, now acutely aware of the hitch of my giddy up as the unconscious dysfunction of my gait morphed into conscious dysfunction, the harder I tried to fix the issue, the more frustrated I grew. Finally, call it what you will, divine intervention, fate, or just dumb luck. But in 1999, a chiropractor and her husband that had been U.S. Judo national team had moved to my small town of Canton, Illinois. Dr. Kim and her husband, Ruben, came to our school to advertise their speed and agility to camps. And I will never forget when Ruben did a backflip kick and hit the net on the basketball hoop. I was sold. I signed up for the next camp that Dr. Kim and Ruben held. It was, a hum it was humbling to attend the speed camp with all of the other top athletes in my high school. And I found many of the exercises difficult and others that I could not do at all. By this point, my athleticism was developing, but my leg was undeniably taking a toll on my ability to create speed and power. Another twist of fate came in the form of a sprained ankle while playing basketball. My mother wanted me to see an orthopedist, but I had other plans. The very next day, I was at Dr. Kim's office. While she immediately went to work on my ankle, she also pointed out some other things that I could work on to improve my overall movement and athletic prowess. Dr. Kim was far ahead of the field of chiropractic and physical therapy when it came to incorporating a gym, functional movement, and athletic training into a person's overall treatment and performance plan. My ankle quickly bounced back, and I also noticed that the exercises Dr. Kim had me perform were translating over to the field of play. I was ecstatic to see appreciable change with the issue that had plagued me for so long, and I was now moving from conscious dysfunction to improved function. The true goal of my time with Dr. Kim was not found in obtaining unconscious function, but instead, it was the evolving clarity of my future career path. My struggles now carried more meaning as I saw a way to ensure that a future me would have any and every opportunity not to lose the very thing that is so intimately intertwined with human life, movement. I am among the fortunate few led by early life experiences to prioritize movement, exercise, and health at a very young age. I eventually went to chiropractic school and I've been in practice for almost a decade. Over the last 20 years, I've put my health first, but I've also been intrigued with pushing my body, mind, my body and mind beyond the generally accepted limits of our modern times. Doing so to provide personal proof that what I thought was once lost is still intact. My goal for this book is to illustrate the vital role that movement plays in our lives as humans. Our relationship with our bodies has become disconnected and convoluted over the last few decades, and the only way to correct course is to increase our awareness. We must shift from a reactive health management model to a proactive optimization of our entire body, mind, and spirit. So there's the intro to, again, the age of movement, which is available on uh, Amazon. It's available on bowbeer.com. It's available on chirofarm.com. We actually still are uh, selling uh, signed copies that you can get shipped directly to you or pick up the farm uh, if you go on bowbeer.com. So check that out as well. Uh, yeah, I hope that you do pick it up. Uh, yeah, just uh, I'm going to be starting to work on the Audible version as well. So it's out in Kindle, paperback, and hardback. There you go. It is uh, January 3rd. Go grab the book and learn about the age of movement. And uh, like the title says, time keeps on moving and so should you. So get out there and do it.